What you see here is a is a young longleaf pine seedling right here in the in the South Mississippi, which is where it's native. Uh, very interesting story about these longleaf pines. This one here is probably planted about a year and a half ago, and as you can see, it's got a unique look to it. It almost looks like grass, and this is uh, what it's called as a grass stage. And this particular growth form of of, this, of the uh, longleaf pine, it's the way that it grows. You can see here the candle at the top. Basically, what this allows this plant to do is be immune to fire. So. Historically, before European man came and started planting loblolly and deforesting all across the southeast, there were at least 90 million acres of longleaf pine ecosystems spanning from Virginia all the way to Texas. Today we have probably less than a million acres. So it's a vastly devastated ecosystem. And we're actually, as wildlife professionals, conservationists, foresters, we're very active and very interested in, and have a vested interest in restoring that ecosystem to our south, to our Mississippi, to all states across the southeast. Okay, so let's think about the diversity of a longleaf pine ecosystem. What makes it so important? Well, it's actually the second most diverse ecosystem in the entire world, not just North America, only second to the rainforest. And you think, you look out there and you think there's no way. But when you see a mature longleaf ecosystem where you have thousands upon thousands of annual forbs, which are wildflowers, you know, lanceleaf coreopsis, uh, purple coneflower, all kind of native indigenous plants that not only are good for wildlife, but good for other species like uh, pollinators such as monarch butterflies. Um, it's just amazing that you can have such a diverse ecosystem in a pine stand. And so this is what allows that. When Native Americans were, were managing the land before we actually started inhabiting the south portion of, Amer of North America, they basically used fire to maintain habitat. And so through that adaptation and over the years, the longleaf pine has adapted to flourish in fire. In fact, it will actually encourage growth of longleaf pine because of the fire. Now, does a turkey, a wild turkey or a white-tailed deer or quail, do they care anything about the species of tree or pine that are growing in their environment? No, not necessarily. But what makes a longleaf pine important is not necessarily the pine itself. It's its tolerance to fire. See, in longleaf pine, we could actually run a fire across this entire 180 acres, which is planned to do this upcoming season, and it could scar this entire landscape, and you would think there's nothing going to survive. And if a loblolly plantation were here, that would be true. But with longleaf, and because of the way they have ecologically adapted over time, and they've evolved to, to be vigorous through fire, they actually can endure it. And so, when you do prescribe fire, you're actually setting back succession. And what that means is you have early successional vegetation on the ground that turkeys can thrive in, deer can thrive in, even monarch butterflies, pollinators, um, bobwhite quail, which are on drastic decline. All these species look for this kind of vegetation. And when I say early successional vegetation, what I'm talking about is the first two to three years after disturbance of the soil. Now you can do that through several ways. That can be done through herbicide application, disking, um, and, and the easiest and most cost effective way is through fire. And so that's what makes this plant right here so resilient and so special to our state and to the entire Southeast as a whole, because it can actually endure that fire and you can continue to have this kind of vegetative cover on your landscape, you know, year after year. Whereas if you plant loblolly, it is going to reach maturity probably a little bit faster, maybe reach timber market value a little earlier, maybe five to eight years premature to loblo to longleaf. But you actually can have wildlife habitat for that 15 year span that you're not gonna have in a loblolly stand. So 
every two to three years you're putting prescribed fire and burning through throughout this habitat you're keeping good wildlife food forage cover everything that a wild turkey or a white-tailed deer or quail might be looking for you're encouraging that and you're not necessarily doing it with a whole lot of monetary investment all it takes is a little bit of a little bit of fire a little bit of flame and you can continue to have this kind of habitat on your property and, um, and, and this is basically you know how you can do it uh, there's there's several ways that you can go about getting cost assistance to do this it's been a national initiative as a as an employee with NWTF we work a lot with the uh, NRCS which is the Natural Resource Conservation Services and we have a strong partnership with them where we can actually visit landowners give technical assistance, right management plans, and actually enter them into cost assistance where they could potentially get funded to actually plant seedlings and even funded down the road where they can maintain these longleaf ecosystems through prescribed fire. 